Thanks for joining us. I'm so glad you're with us today because we have a beautiful set of projects for you, which is all about mom. So we are making some keychains and I'll show you how to make jewelry as well as a special gift for mom that includes dried flowers. So uh, my name is Stephanie Menor. I teach jewelry making classes here at Michael's for UV resin and for polymer clay. And today's class is very special because we get to combine those two things and show you how well they work together. So let's switch to the other camera and I'll give you a little sneak peek of what we're gonna be crafting together. Okay. Let's fix the camera a little bit there. Okay, so this shows you some of the projects that we're gonna make. This could be a necklace. It also could just be something that hangs from um, your car uh, mirror, your rear view mirror. Here we have a keychain with some beaded accents and of course the dried flower disc there. Here's another one that could be a little hanging ornament in a car, um, but you can see that the base is made of polymer clay. And then we're gonna add flowers and all sorts of fun things on top. And we give it that shiny effect with UV resin. Here's another keychain. This one's very simple. One single flower in the middle with a matching little drop. One more to show you here. Okay. So all of these things use basically the same technique, but I'm going to show it to you and show you options for expanding that technique so you can customize it to be your very own. So the products that we're working with today are a combination of products from the UV resin craft line at Michael's. This is available in the jewelry making department. There's a whole section of it. Lots and lots of flowers. Here's another example of a flower pack that's sold. And this is the jar of UV resin. So this is a pourable resin that cures in UV light. So I have that UV light right here. And I'm going to turn on the light. You can see that turns on very similar to what you'd find in a nail salon if you've ever gotten like gel gel nails done um i have this blue thing that you're looking at is actually a silicone mat this is protecting my work surface this is just like a desk that i work on and so um the uv resin it doesn't stick to silicone so that's why this is amazing to work but i also have this white surface here which is a ceramic tile that I got at the hardware store. And this is what I like to work with clay on is the ceramic tile. And then I can pick up the whole tile and this goes into my oven. And I so I kind of use it as like a baking sheet too. And it also means that I can craft on this and not have to move it to another surface that goes in the oven. This whole thing goes into the oven. I have an assortment of beads and findings. I have some tools. You're going to need some jewelry tools, some basic tools like this for cutting, um, and even a round nose plier for making some loops. And um, also, I have a whole lot of jump rings and some other basic supplies, like we have some hemp thread here and um, also some polymer clay cutters. This is what we're going to use to cut our polymer clay. Um, so let's jump right in. So I am going to first bring this board in. This is my ceramic tile. And grab my clay, which I realize I don't have here. The most important thing, let me grab some. Okay, so the clay that you buy in the jewelry making department, it comes like this. It comes in a slab. So this is very um, similar to other solid clay that's out there. Um, it's sold in a, in a different format, okay? Now, when you're working with solid clay, it's really important to condition it. And that's what I'm gonna do here. And that is where you heat it up. Um, I'm gonna bring you out just a little bit here. 
you're heating it up, you're getting it ready to work with, okay? So I'm gonna keep that process going while I talk a little bit about clay. So this is polymer clay, and you're used to seeing it like this, a solid color. I'm actually gonna take half of this so that I can fit it better in my hand. Now, our clay is also sold like this with patterns already in the clay. This is something new that you may not have seen before. And so these patterns are also available. The projects that we're doing today work best with just a solid light color. So this can be any color of your choice. You can see I'm using this kind of like a peachy tone. And you really want to condition this well. Um, you'll find that conditioning of clay is a little harder for lighter colors. They just tend to be a little, I don't know, kind of chalkier. So uh, don't get discouraged if you see your clay doing stuff like this, like kind of just breaking open. That's okay. Keep working with it. Keep bending it around with your fingers, folding it onto itself. And when it gets really pliable, that's when you can roll it out. I'm just picking up the little sh clay shrapnel here. Um, so also I wanna mention polymer clay is an oven baked clay. So you are gonna need to put this into the oven for it to harden, okay? This goes into a 250 degree oven for 20 minutes. If you're making something really thick, like if I were to roll this in a ball and make, uh, I don't know, a charm, a 3D charm, you might wanna bake it for a little bit longer the 20 minutes is for something that is like what we're baking, which is only about maybe four to five millimeters thick. So 20 minutes is the right uh, number for that. Okay, so as I'm conditioning, you can see now that when I go like this, it doesn't just like break apart. If I pull it, it'll still break apart. So that means that I have to keep conditioning it more. And so I wanna keep going until it is pliable so that I can pull it and stretch it and it's not gonna like snap, okay? See how I'm pulling it? So eventually it snaps, but um, you can see that it has a little more elasticity now. Okay, so once you have your clay nice and warmed up, you're gonna want some other tools over here. So I have this acrylic roller. It, this is the hollow version. There are um, acrylic rollers that are solid, just depends on what you have. And then I also have some thickness guides. Let me show you these. If you've ever rolled out a pie crust and needed to roll it out to one particular thickness, you want to use something, or you may have used something like a thickness guide. So this is something you put on either side of your clay or your dough when you are rolling it out. And this is, helps you to achieve an even thickness. Um, I will um, encourage you to use the chat function if you have any questions. I did see a question come up just now in the chat about... Um, she's having a problem with her clay that it is kind of like crumbly you gotta condition it just like i'm doing here so when i started this little chunk of clay about what three or four minutes ago it was it was crumbly it was crumbling kind of all over my work surface but if i condition it well it's no longer crumbly see i can pull it and it's it'll eventually let go but you can see how much more give it has Okay, so here's my clay. I have my roller. <laughs> now, you're, if you have a dark colored clay, it, the color will transfer to any um, tools that you have. So just FYI, that's a thing. All right, so I'm rolling this out and having these thickness guides are helping me to roll it to an even thickness. Without these here, I might be like, as I'm placing pressure, I'm, I'm right-handed, so I might be putting more pressure on the right side, which means the left side will be tilted up. This helps it become very, very thin and very, very consistent, okay? All right, 
Next thing I'm bringing in, I have this little bowl here. This is cornstarch. And this is how it just helps me um, avoid stickiness. So I, I'd like to take my clay cutter, dip it in a little cornstarch, place it here and press down. And I'm pressing down on all the corners and then I lift straight up. All right, I have a little, a smaller one here. This is a little daisy. I dip that as well and press that up here. And depending on how much clay you condition and how big your work surface is, you may find that you can make many different shapes. And then because I'm working on a ceramic tile, I can just weed out what I don't want. So it makes it very easy. And then here, I can just keep going with it. Even a small piece of clay like this, I can roll out again. I'm just gonna scoot this over a little bit, roll it out over here. Okay, to another shape. This is just kind of, there you go, little diamond. If you're, now you'll notice it got stuck in here. That's because I was too quick on the draw and I didn't tap this into cornstarch. So that can happen if you're not using cornstarch. It can happen if you are using cornstarch too, but gently just pop that out. You want to avoid getting your fingernail imprints in there or your fingerprints in general. And again, I can just weed out and reuse. All right, so that is the process of rolling out conditioning, rolling out and cutting shapes. And, and these cutters are available in so many different fun shapes. Now I can pick this up and this goes directly into my oven, 250 degrees for 20 minutes. And I'll show you what comes out of the oven. I did these earlier and I didn't touch them at all. This is exactly how they came out of the oven. I wanted to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly, because there's some ugly here. You see how, you know, it's just not perfect in the corners and the edges, but that's okay because we can fix this up. So the first thing I can do is I can kind of snip at the parts that are bothering me, the parts that didn't quite get cut correctly. I can snip those. I can also take uh, an emery board and kind of just clean up any edges. So that you can perfect this. If you have a Dremel drill, that sometimes has a, um, you can have like a buffing wheel that works really well for this process, okay? And I'm making a mess all over my work surface. But you can see that how it comes out of the oven is not the final. You do wanna work with it a little bit to kind of perfect it. Um, the other thing that I wanna mention, let me just clean this up while I'm talking. Um, so these, of course, have a little bit of cornstarch residue. So you might want to also give them a bath in warm soapy water just to get that residue off um, so that you can make a perfect little piece for mom. All right. So once you have it perfect, let's work on this teardrop a little bit. See, I'm just concentrating along the edge. Anything that didn't come out just perfect. I'm kind of just feeling with my finger and fixing that up. You see how easily that works. <laughs> the thing you want to achieve, especially with this dried flower technique, is you want a very smooth surface. All right. Let's go from there. Okay, I think that I want to put purple flowers on this one. So this is an example of how the flowers come. There's lots of different options 
But these flowers um, work really well for this project because oh, this is when I tear into this package like I'm unhinged. Let's get some scissors out. Okay, so here are the flowers. So when you break into the package, like I just did, there is this like little acetate um, in the center. There's actually two pieces to it. I like to keep this. This is my one that I have over on the side. I like to take away all the packaging, but keep this because they nest together just perfectly. And you can like nest, nest, nest all of your different flowers together. And it helps protect them uh, on your work surface because these flowers are very, very thin and very, they can break easily. And if you have your fan on, they can just fly across the room. So we don't want that. So that's my little tip is to save these acetate trays and use those. Let me bring you in just a little bit here. All right, so now we're gonna bring in the UV resin. Um, this is, as I said, a clear material that dries under UV light. So this is how you're gonna take it from what it is now, which is a matte finish to a shiny finish. And this is the product that helps adhere the flowers onto the top. So I wanna make sure that this is clean, just kind of wiping it. And I'm going to put just a little bit of that right on top. And you can go in with a wood stick. Or if you have an old paintbrush, which I have a very old paintbrush right here, you can use a paintbrush. Um, but now that paintbrush is going to be your UV resin paintbrush. You can never use it again. Uh, so I'm going to try to do this with a wood stick. And so I'm just kind of moving this around. Maybe I need a little bit more. And just creating kind of a, a wet surface that our flowers were, will stick to. Um, you also want to have a paper towel off to the side whenever you're working with UV resin because you want to wipe that stick clean before you set it down anywhere. Um, all right, let's see. We have some branchy bits. And we have a few different kinds of flowers here. So I think that I'm going to put the branchy parts down first. This is what it looked like when it came out of the package. I can go in with some scissors and cut this to the shapes that I want. So I, I see a good place to cut it right there. And then I'm trying to preserve the natural branchiness of this. Okay. And I kind of like the way this little stem looks. And you know what? I'm gonna use that right in the middle. So just place it down and press down gently. And because this is a UV curing resin, what that means is it's not gonna start to harden until I put the UV light on it. So I don't have to really worry that this is going to dry before I'm done. All right, so now I have a little bit of resin on this stick. I can use it to pick up a flower and let's put it up here at the top. I'm gonna coat this whole thing with another coat of resin. And that one, there we go. You can see how delicate these are. Let's put another one over here. And there's one hiding underneath here. 
let's put another one here. I don't love this one up at the top, so you know what? There's nothing that is tying us down to that design, and I just don't like the way it looks. So I'm gonna hold this down. I have two sticks, and I'm gonna remove this. Tweezers would also work very well here. I'm gently trying to scooch this one up. Okay, there we go. And then let's bring this one in too. That's better, I like that. All right, so my resin is not quite to the edge. Let me pick this up and show you closer. You see, my resin is not quite to the edge. I'm not really worried about that. What I want to do at this point is lock these in place. So I do want to cure this. So I can bring my UV light in. This is a nine watt UV light. I hit the button, you can see that light comes on. And we are going to cure this for just one minute. If this is on a timer, it'll it'll turn off after one minute. I think that's all we should need to kind of lock that layer in place. And then we're going to go with another layer and make it go all the way to the edges, maybe add a slight little domed effect to it. And that'll look really pretty. Now let's look at one of our examples. In all of our examples, we need to drill a hole up at the top. If we're turning this into an earring or a keychain, we need to have a connection point for that to be able to connect to the next thing. Um, but I like to do that kind of drilling last. And what I'm gonna use for that is a small hand drill. It looks something like this. So this is, they, they sometimes call this a pin vise, but I'm gonna use this to drill the hole. All right, so that was under for one minute. And now I'm just gonna go and put a nice coat on top. And again, taking a wood stick and moving that. Now I don't really have to worry about that flower underneath. It's not gonna move. It is locked down. And I wanna gently encourage all of this to go to the edge. Don't really want it to go over the edge. Um, Cause I, so I'm really trying to control where the resin goes. It's okay if it goes all over the edge, it just might not look as clean. So we wanna try to keep this on the top edge. Let's do just a little bit more. Okay. And then I'm ready to bring the light in again. So now my resin is going all the way to the edge. It, all of my flowers are covered and it's looking pretty good. So what I'm showing you here is sort of the most basic way of using the dried flowers. It's just the dried flowers on top of there. In our next piece that we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to jazz it up. You know, I always have to add some glitter or some bling or some rhinestones or something. So I'll show you how to add those two. But this is for the purists that just want dried flowers. And I'm gonna let this go for about a minute, two minutes maybe. Um, thank you, Maria. In the chat, she asked a question. Can you put an earring, uh, finding like a metal piece into it before you bake it? That's a really good question. Yes, you can. 
So this goes into a 250 degree oven, which is a fairly low temperature oven. You can put things that are glass, things that are metal um, into that oven and it's going to be fine. All right, so that went for a minute. I really would cure it another minute, but I wanna show you what we have here. I did kind of overflow right here, this little drop. Um, it's still a little bit wet. It's not fully cured. So I think, I think I can still wipe this off. And if you don't catch it before it's fully cured, that's fine too. We can kind of scrape it off after it's cured. All right, let's go in for another minute. Um, so yes, findings, it, especially if you're having any type of, uh, like a screw eye finding that you need to put in there. Yes, you can put it into the oven. Now it will not, um, the polymer clay will not bond with metal in the oven. So um, you'll have to still take that out and use a glue to, um, to stick it completely. This is the glue that we recommend. I love this Loctite um, gel glue. It's super glue, but it's in a gel form so you can like control it a little easier. It's not so wet that it's like, you know, leaking out all over the place. Okay. Uh, yes, the question on different kinds of flowers. You can use paper flowers. You can use stickers that look like flowers. Um, you can use paper in general. In fact, that's what I'm going to do next. Here, I want to show you what we have here. So this, here's that shiny, shiny finish. And here's what the back looks like. Now I could also turn this over and also do a shiny finish on the back. Um, or since this is a Mother's Day gift, uh, I don't have a little marker, but if you had a permanent, like a fine, ultra fine Sharpie, you know, you can sign the back of it and then clear coat that with UV resin. That's another fun thing to do to preserve these. All right, so that's what we have. This is our first one. And now at this point I get to decide, is this a keychain? Is this a necklace pendant? What is this that I've just made? And that's where we can bring in all these different findings. The name of that glue again is Loctite. Loctite super glue. Works really well to bond metal to um, clay. So here are some findings options. So if I'm gonna turn into a keychain, I'm gonna need something like this, or maybe even something like this. This is like a swivel lobster clasp. If I wanted to turn this into a barrette, I have something like this. This might not be the best shape for a barrette shape, but I can glue this barrette to the back and now I have a custom barrette. If I wanted to make it into a little brooch, they sell these kind of pins. This is everything that I'm showing you is from Michaels, but this is like a pin back with a flat surface. You can glue that and it fell, um, but you can glue that right on the back of it to make a little pin brooch. If I wanted to turn it into an earring, I would need something that looks like this, all right? So, but what I'm gonna show you how to do is to turn this into a very, very, very simple necklace. And so I am gonna need a hole at the top to do that. And that's where we bring in this little hand drill. So to use this, you just find where you want to start drilling and drill through. You're drilling through the UV resin and you're gonna be drilling through the clay. And in just a few seconds, we're through. You reverse it. And you see it just makes a very clean hole at the top. So to make a very, very simple necklace, I'm going to use, this is a hemp cord. All right, so I want to cut this to length. So I want this to be kind of a longer 
necklace. So I would go about 24, 26 inches in length. But anyone who's taking my classes knows that I hate to measure. <laughs> so I'm not measuring. I'm, I'm just looking at the cord and kind of thinking how long it needs to be. All right, going to go through here. and bring that to the center. And then, so this is what we have. And then I can take both ends of the cord through a bead. And that is where it gets a little bit tricky, especially if you're using a pearl because pearl, the holes in pearls tend to be really small. And so I don't think that I'm actually gonna be able to fit that. So you want to get a slightly larger hole bead. Um, let's see what I have here. I do have a larger hole bead. It happens to be orange. So let's just pretend that it's not orange, <laughs> that it matches this project and see if we can get both ends through. Well, today might not be our lucky day on this one, um, but you do wanna have a, a um, bead at the top. Let me show you our example where both ends of the cord can go through. So here in our example, we've strung one pearl on this great way to use up leftover beads that you might have, and then just did a simple overhand knot at the top. And that's our necklace. It, we're not adding any fancy um, findings to it. Um, this is just closes with a simple overhand knot. Or this can be something that you hang from your rear view mirror. Okay, so let's... Let's look at this another way. If we wanted to turn this into an earring, what would we do? I would need one of these little guys. This is an ear wire and I need a jump ring and you wanna use a large jump ring. So this one's about, about eight millimeters. And let's connect that jump ring with some pliers. So I open the jump ring, put it through, and actually I could use an even larger jump ring, but let's put our ear wire on and close it up. Oh, ear wire fell off. And to close these up, you might want to get a second plier and just close that up. Now we have an earring, a large earring, but it's really cute. All right, so if I didn't want this to be an earring, I'm gonna take this apart. And I wanted instead for it to be a keychain. I'm actually gonna put a second jump ring on there, close the original one up, and then use this jump ring this little jump ring at the top to jump to your key ring, okay? So I wanted to show you all these different ways of working with some beautiful thing that you made because a lot of crafters have told me that they make something beautiful, but it's where they have to turn that thing into a usable functional piece of jewelry or accessory where they get a little bit lost. So I like to show you a lot of different options of working with the same thing. So you can see how easy it is to switch between projects. All right, you guys with me? <laughs> All right, so moving on. I wanted to move on to one of these darker pieces that I made. Um, this one is a daisy shape and I'm gonna clean him up just a little bit here. So again, using an emery board, or if you had a Dremel, that would work really well here and really make those edges smooth and perfect. Clean that up. All right, so here I definitely wanna use some lighter color flowers so I get that contrast.
we're going to keep this one really simple. And I'm just going to add this little tiny little daisy flower to the top of it. All right, going in with a little resin and my wood stick. Drawing this to the edges. And with that wet wood stick, putting this on there. And now I can perfect the edges. Okay. Get another paper towel here. And so you can see how delicate these are. Pull you in a little bit. So, you know, some of them got a little, a little twisted here on the side. So I'm just going to try, if I can, to straighten those out just a little bit. But I think that's about the best we're going to do with that flower. All right, and now let's do let about uh, secure that in place. All right, so I'm going to put this off to the side, let that cure for two minutes while I show you this one. Okay, so for this keychain, we have a disc with flowers on it. So I think that you guys know what that process looks like. But I want to show you the final assembly of this and creating these letters. So we've created some little dangles. For that, you are going to need a finding that's called a head pin. This is a head pin. We'll get a nice straight one. This is a head pin. Looks like a like a nail. Oh, oh, blurry. See so there you can see. It's got like a nail head. So it's called a head pin. Not to be confused with this guy over here. This is an eye pin. So it's got a eye tip to it. But otherwise they're the same. So you want a head pin for this. And now we want to start stacking to make a little beaded charm. So I am going to do a black bead. Easiest, it's easiest just to hold the head pin in your hand and use that to pick up. Instead of picking up a bead and stringing it like this, it's just less work to do. All right, so I'm just putting two color beads here. And now I wanna do best mom. So I'm going to put mom here. M. And then two more. And I just kind of randomly selected those colors. Um, Let's put one more just because I like colorful things. Oops, one fell. How about that? All right, so you have your beads stacked up there. And now we need to create a loop here at the top. And so to do that, you are going to need a round nose plier. It's a plier where the noses uh, are round. <laughs> they are like cones. And you're also going to need some wire cutters, something like this. And I have slightly better quality ones right here. All right. So the first thing we need to do is bend 
this 90 degrees from the top bead. So I kind of bend it partially and then just with my hands, I really bend it so that it's a full 90 degree bend. All right, and now we wanna trim this little tail. This tail right now is over a half of an inch. I wanna trim that to about three eighths of an inch. Ooh, about right, right there. And I just flew that across my room. So I'm gonna find that with my toe in about a month. <laughs> so don't be me. Don't let that fly across the room. Oops, sorry. I just, oh, I moved you around there. I just started doing this and I didn't even explain what I was doing. Um, so I grab at the tip with my round nose pliers, just the tip of this and I start twisting it back on itself. And that's how I create a loop at the top. And you can kind of fix that loop and make it perfect. But that is the process of making a little beaded charm. And you can also make one that says the word best. All right, that this went for a minute. I'm going to put it for another minute. You'll also find that when you are using a dark background color, that you may need to cure it a little bit longer than light colors because UV resin is a light cured resin. It cures in UV light. And UV light, like any other light, um, is reflected by light colors. And so when we did this on a light surface, that light was kind of bouncing here and reflecting back. So you're getting almost like a double, um, double cure effect. On this one, it's absorbing the light. So you may need to run that for maybe two to three minutes. Um, UV resin also cures in the sunlight. The purest UV that there is out there comes from the sun. So if you're crafting on a sunny day, leave it on a sunny windowsill, take it outside, and it will harden beautifully for you in under 10 minutes. Okay, so this is going, I'm just touching it. I can see that it's still a little sticky. So I want to let that go again. All right, let's put these to the side for final assembly. And now I wanna do something that is really fun. I'm gonna use this disc and again, perfecting the sides of it just to get any little foot that's left from my cutter. Okay, so moving away from dried flowers for just a second, I wanted to show you the versatility of UV resin. So I printed out just on my regular printer, some things. So I have a little monogram here. Even easier if you're at Michael's, you can go to the sticker aisle and any sticker that you find, you can stick on top of this and cover with UV resin. It'll be a gorgeous keychain. Um, but I kind of, I printed, um images this is my mom hi phyllis this is my mom say happy mother's day to her my printer is being funky so i didn't like the way that these printed out but these ones printed out well and a monogram works really great for mother's day gift but also take a look at the monogram that i chose it's something that has kind of like a hard outside edge so i didn't want to print out just the letter p you see a lot of monograms like cursive font those would be really hard to cut out. So I, I chose this particular monogram because it had a hard outside edge that I could easily cut out with scissors. But I'm actually going to choose this little retro tattoo moment, which I also chose because it has a hard outside edge because I want to cut this right along that edge. And this is where having a like super precise pair of scissors would be helpful. If you have, if you are a Cricut crafter, um, you can, I mean, you're really only limited by your imagination of what you could put on one of these keychains. Uh, you know, whip that up in your Cricut design space and, and cut that out and the Cricut does the cutting for you. So that's what makes it really nice. Also why it's nice to work with stickers.
because you don't have to cut it out yourself. So when you are using paper or photographs with UV resin, just keep in mind that the surface underneath it needs to be a light color. Because you'll see when we start to put the resin on this paper, it gets almost like a watermark where the paper becomes slightly more translucent. And so if it's on a dark background, it will, um, it'll show too much of that dark background through it. We get questions every time I do one of these classes, can I use photos? Can I use um, printed items? And the answer is yes. Um, UV resin is just it's so easy to use with almost any material because you're you're coating it and you're sandwiching it between two layers of resin. So whatever you're putting in there gets very well protected. So there we go. All right, so I'm just going to put a little dab under here. But that under dab isn't what's going to hold this in place. The, what's going to hold it in place is what we do on top. So I'm just pouring that. And I'll bring it in a little bit for this part. And working that to the edges. You know, as I'm doing this, you know what this looks like? One of those, um, oh, those things for your phone, the pop it, pop it, uh, pop up things. Sure looks like that. And so just some precautions working with UV resin. If you have sensitive skin, use gloves. Um, make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area. You can see I am touching this resin with my fingers without gloves. I, I've worked with this for so many years, it doesn't cause me any problems. So um, I'm fine with just going in gloveless. All right, so before I cure it, I want to make sure it is centered. Make sure I don't have any lumps and bumps where I don't want them to be. I'm looking pretty good. Um, but before, before I cure it, I wanted to add just a little bit of pizzazz. I have this white AB glitter, which I'm just gonna put a little bit out here. And I'm just gonna pick up and kind of dot where I want a little bit of shimmer to be. Because this is white glitter, it's almost like transparent with just um, like iridescence to it. Now, if I wanted to, I could have mixed this glitter in with the resin before I poured it over, but that means that on top of our mom here, it would have gotten the glitter. So I wanted to keep the glitter just to the surrounding areas. Oh, mom's moving around. Okay. How's that? Are we looking good here? I see an empty spot right here. All right. And then we lock that down. So I could have added little rhinestones. I could have added all sorts of fun stuff with that, but I'm trying to kind of keep it elegant. All right, we're gonna be wrapping up here. 
in just a few minutes. So if you had any last minute questions, go ahead and ask them in the chat. I'll try to answer them live if I can. But I'm gonna let these cure for a few minutes and then we'll do some final assembly. Zoom you back out. All right, so I know on my mom keychain, I want to use gold hardware and I want to use that little swivel. And on the other one, we also get some jump rings and this kind of a keychain. All right, so I'm gonna let this one go. Let's take a look at what we have here. Now I can tell from feeling this that, you know, because this flower that we use was very dimensional, this needs another coat of resin because I can still feel the texture of the flower and which means it's not fully covered in the, in the resin. So I would um, in my own time, put another coat of resin just to make sure that that flower is not gonna get bumped around and messed up. Now let's pretend that I've already done that. And we're going to drill a hole in the top so we can assemble this. And I'm using quite a large drill bit here. This, I believe, is a three millimeter drill bit. Um, that just makes sure that the hole is big enough to accept the jump ring. All right, let's get a jump ring through there. And I'm gonna attach another jump ring before I close this up. All right, and then this one, open that one up. add all of my pieces to my keychain. It's very simple and easy. This is a great project for kids with adult supervision. Um, great project. All right, so here's our mom. So that is fully cured. Looks like I didn't have any drippage, so that's good. And I want to make this one a swivel keychain. So I want to keep the hole that I drill close enough to the top so that a jump ring can fit through there, but not too close to the top that I'm worried that it might break. Here I have just a little debris in there. All right, opening up a jump ring. Placing an extra jump ring and closing this. So I'm just making a little short chain that is three jump rings long. And then adding my swivel. And there we go. This would look really good with some type of a charm here. Well, let's see what I have. I have some charms here to the side. I have a little butterfly charm. That would be great if I could connect that. That would be really pretty. I have a little flower charm here. That'd be really pretty to connect there on a separate jump ring. Um, so really, in terms of design, uh, the sky's the limit or how you want to put these things together, but I hope that we've given you some of the basic building blocks and techniques that you'll need to do to start crafting with polymer clay and with UV resin. So let's bring in all of our pieces here. 
Um, thank you. In the comments, we just had a great comment that says, I like the idea of turning these into a refrigerator magnet. Very, very smart. Um, for that, I would just use hot glue, stick a little magnet disc on the back there, and, um, and you have a magnet. So thank you so much for joining us. We do classes three times a month on UV resin and polymer clay. So I hope that you'll look at michaels.com for upcoming classes and check us out. We always like to do fun stuff here and we're trying to bring you something new every time. So check us out. And until next time, we'll see you. Have fun crafting. <laughs>